we gather here this morning to speak of transformation, of transcendence, of dying and rising. We gather here this, this morning to speak of the song of the cosmos, the source of our destination. We gather to speak of wholeness and harmony throughout all ages within all of creation across all boundaries. Each of us is wrapped in a mystery, this ineffable force, this great spirit, this God. As in life, Marilyn Morgan Harrison was wrapped and held in God's glory. And so also in death, she may be welcomed and folded back into this mystery. We are all God's children. But what we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we trust by our faith that through our journey, that when it has ended, that we too shall see and we too shall understand this great mystery that God has in store for us. Friends, we gather here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Marilyn Harrison, the loving mother the sage wife, the grandmother, the creator, the curator, the entrepreneur, the humanitarian, and the world traveler. For those of you who are gathered here, you understand the privilege of what it was to be part of Marilyn's life. And so we come together this morning in grief to say our goodbyes, to acknowledge this human loss, We gather to hear God's word of hope, to help us move a little bit closer to understanding this great mystery of God. We gather to remember Marilyn Harrison and to commend to God with thanksgiving Marilyn's life. So let us come together for worship. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and evermore. If you're able, you can please stand for a hymn.
This first scripture reading is from Proverb 31, verses 26 to 29, from Eugene Peterson's The Message. The good wife speaks when she has something worthwhile to say, and she always says it kindly. She keeps an eye on everyone in her household, and she keeps them all busy and productive. Her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you have outclassed them all. Good morning. Obviously, it's not easy to be up here, but um, any excuse to take the, take the mask off this morning <laughs> is welcome. Our mom was possessed of many talents, not the least, least of which was her skill at editing. From school papers to college essays to cover letters, she spent countless hours counseling me and my brothers, and even some of you, and how, to, and how to sharpen our thoughts and hone our words to greatest effect. It goes without saying that we could use her editorial help right about now. There's no doubt our words will fall short. Our mom led a rich life in all the right ways, applying her many talents across many disciplines, impacting many people in profound ways, and generating far more insightful stories than we could possibly include in the short amount of time we have here this morning. So maybe it makes perfect sense to start with the one talent, by her own admission, our mom was not good at, which was saying goodbye whether it was as momentous as dropping us off at college for the first time or just ending a weekend visit, she could not bear to say goodbye. It's no wonder then that she managed to make every goodbye as torturous and unnecessarily prolonged as as possible. There was always one more care package to pack, one more crucial bit of advice to impart, one more excuse to delay the inevitable. Of course, the one goodbye she most hated to make was to this place, Cape Cod and in particular, this little corner of Cape Cod. From the salt marshes of East Orleans to the bay beaches of East Ham, this was her favorite place on earth. Alliance, Ohio may have been her childhood home, but it was here that she came to restore her soul. It was here that her many talents found a canvas to flourish on, and it was here that she was a mother and a friend to so many. Many of you will recall wonderful visits hosted by her at the East Orleans house which, like her, was warm, welcoming, and gracious. There were ferns and bulbs in the woodland garden, dahlias, hydrangeas, and her favorite cat mint in the flower beds, an espalier on the garage with trained trained pear vines, a pergola by the pool with climbing clematis, and a mail-order greenhouse for her prize-winning orchids. The house was a magnet for her grandchildren, who she taught to swim in the pool and who loved to explore the many treasures in her basement. And the light-filled living room was a perfect space for her to play her piano, dogs curled up on the couch, while the evening's dinner was allowed to roast. For for others of you, the beach house at Cranberry Lane was the spot to reconnect with our mom. She loved to hold roost on the porch deck there, overlooking the seemingly endless sandbars, and receiving walk-up guests with their wet hair and sandy swimwear. These, These visits meant so much to her. She was energized by hearing about your interest, and loved to play the role of amateur career counselor, sometimes giving out more advice than was wanted and proclaiming to be an expert in fields she knew little about. But like it or leave it, it was always sage and always from the heart. But to truly understand our mom's devotion to this part of Cape Cod, you have to visualize the original house she considered home, which is hardly a house. Of course, I'm referring to Siemens Cottage number eight at Kingsbury Beach. She and her dad first came here in 1958, and not even a hurricane evacuation, with two small children to the local schoolhouse gym, where they slept on cots and listened to the wind howl could dampen her enthusiasm. She had found her forever paradise. She so loved this spot that she wanted to share it with as many friends and family as possible, so that they too could appreciate it in the same way she, in the same ways she did. It started by sending out the word to her, her Ohio loved ones, Many of you will remember our grandparents renting nearby, as well as our Smith cousins, and of course, Uncle Barry and Aunt Barbara and their children. But it didn't stop there. 
Over the years, she welcomed to this little cottage countless school friends of ours, family friends, exchange students, college buddies, girlfriends of both the shirt, short and more durable variety, <laughs> international visitors, friends of friends, friends of friends of friends, some of you even here today, and all at her insistence and at her invitation. Because if you could endure the impossibly cramped living conditions with the impossibly cramped shower stall and the woefully overmatched hot water tank, then you just had to appreciate all the things that she appreciated about this special place. And you had passed the elusive test. You were deemed worthy of breaking bread with the Harrisons. Over the years, our parents re relocated from Cambridge to Lexington, to Rochester, to Orleans, to Princeton, and in this past year to Warminster, Pennsylvania. Through it all, they never properly downsized, preferring instead to just pack it all just a little bit tighter and a little bit deeper. We learned early on that our mom could not just say goodbye to her loved ones or to her favorite place, but also to every other thing as well. Throughout her life, she indulged an interest in fine things, in artwork, furniture, silverware, but also objects of more subtle worth, handcrafted children's toys, beautifully illustrated books, one-of-a-kind textiles. She certainly had a curator's eye and a memory of an elephant, but perhaps there was a deeper reason for this compulsion. A child of the Depression era, she was taught to appreciate all gifts and all craftsmanship, especially those things that were easily repaired or repurposed. And with an empathetic eye to future generations, she was loath to senselessly contribute to the landfill. So it was during this past year of unpacking things so that we could pack them up again, that we learned of maybe her most inspired salvage effort. It happened during the construction of our modernist Lexington home in the mid-1960s, and specifically the built-ins in our living room. A single sheet of hardwood sherry remained, and rather than tolerate its disposal, she drew up plans to have legs fabricated for it so it could be repurposed as a dining room table and thus initiate her vision of what a dinner meal could be. In the same way that Cape Cod became a seasonal and geographic touchstone for her and our family, that dining room table became a daily touchstone. Every day ended with a full family meal, always candle lit, and always made complete with a vibrant discussion of the day's notable events. And also like Cape Cod, guests and friends were frequently invited, welcomed, and encouraged to contribute. As the family grew bigger with daughters-in-law and with grandchildren, and the number of chairs and high chairs and stools and benches grew around the table as well, so did the stories, as Nana, with that sparkle of interest in her eye, encouraged each and all to share in their recent adventures and accomplishments. When asked recently to describe her favorite family tradition, she answered without hesitation, that big sherry dining room table, that held our family together in the palm of its hand. Tonight we will sit down at that table. Tonight we will sit down at that same table, likely, likely with some of you, say our grace and share our stories of the day and remember our mom for the example and the tradition she was determined to nurture for us and for future generations. Bear with me for a minute while I find my part here. Mom shaped our lives in innumerable ways, even when we didn't want her to. The fierce determination and tireless work ethic that she taught us to have in the face of challenges. The importance of education and the rigorous academic standards she expected us to attain. The rich exposure and deep passion she shared with us for music, art, design, literature, gardening, food, furniture, travel. But she didn't do it alone. Some might say that dad's greatest achievement in life was requesting and receiving Marilyn Morgan's hand in marriage, and he wouldn't disagree.
Perhaps this is the greatest legacy she has left us, the devotion to dad she displayed and the commitment to long-term matrimony. 68 years of marriage, plus seven years of uh, high school and college sweethearts, and the, and the example that's set for all of us. Raising three sometimes unruly boys was only one small part of Marilyn and Keith's joint portfolio. They worshiped together, taught Sunday school together, chaperoned church youth groups together, and formed lasting friendships with their Bible study group together. They started businesses together. They built houses together. They saved money together. And they wrote Christmas letters together, so much so that you really couldn't tell who had written any given sentence. They organized graduate school reunions together. They volunteered together in so many countless ways and places, but most notably in Poland, in Russia, and eventually in the Republic of Georgia and in the service of the American Friends of Georgia. Because it was as a couple and as a family and as a community that they believed great things could be achieved. Ultimately, it speaks to a sense of generosity, a drive to connect with others, and an indefatigable will to make a difference in the lives of others, and by extension, with the world at large, leaving it a better place than they found it. Which gets us back to leaving and saying goodbye. Some of you will relate to that gut-wrenching moment when it's time to say goodbye to, Kings to another Kingsbury Beach vacation. For mom, that moment was never a minute before the 11 a.m. checkout time. And it meant packing up our Vista Cruiser station wagon with so much stuff, pets included, boats strapped to the roof, that frankly there was no Vista left in the cruiser. Uh, and mom would not have had it any other way. If she could not stop time through the, unsheer, excuse me, through the sheer unbearable weight of all of our stuff, she was going to at least bend it to her will. So every year as we rounded the corner of Long Street Lane, she would suggest that maybe we should take Route 6A, the meandering old King's Highway, instead of four-lane high-speed Route 6. And every, dad, every year, Dad would quietly oblige. We'd silently wind our way through Brewster and Barnstable, and inevitably end up in sandwich for what else? A sandwich. Okay. And then after lunch, maybe then we'd be ready to trudge back over the Sagamore Bridge and back to our real lives. If there's a takeaway in mom's inability to say goodbye, maybe it's this. That her life was about cherishing the moment truly living in the moment, truly living in the emotion of the moment. Even when it hurt. And in these last few years, as her body declined, she hurt a lot. But her mind was as sharp as ever. Her will was still determined to make every day count. And she thrived being with loved ones for every last second. We know that she dreaded this day and this final goodbye. But like all things, she accepted her, she accepted the fear, and overcame it by living to the end a life well lived. Excuse me. But like all things, she accepted the fear and overcame it by living to the end a life well lived. A life that impacted others by instilling in them a hopeful outlook, healthy habits, and an empathetic disposition. Most of all, she set an example for us as to how to live a life that will resonate far beyond place and time and it will be remembered by generations to come. And that's truly something to celebrate. Amen. Uh, please join us. Stand if you're able for the singing of the next hymn. <laughs>
The second scripture reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Our mother had a lifelong passion for all things having to do with fine fabrics and textiles. She owned a a fabric business in Lexington, the Golden Hand, for many years and loved to sew and needle pointed. For a while, she even tried her hand at the weft and warp of weaving. It's a mouthful. After visiting weavers handmaking Harris Tweed during a trip to Scotland, she returned home and set up a loom that completely filled a guest room in Rochester. In that spirit, We refer to these remembrances of her as a weaving, in which we thread together stories from her life with a few excerpts from the many emails and cards that we received from you. And those excerpts will be read by members of our family down front here. So the move from Lexington to Rochester was difficult for mom at first. She had to sell her business, leave her beloved modernist house, and move further away from the East Coast and Cape Cod, where she really wanted to be. We looked at a similar architectural house on a hilltop hilltop outside of Rochester, but she and dad wisely settled on a traditional brick residence on East Avenue. Wisely, because we did not realize the depth of snow that regularly fell in Rochester. (laughs) That first winter, it snowed, and it snowed, and it snowed some more. But in short course, mom got involved in Scott's Harley School, breaking breaking new fundraising records for their annual fair. She joined a thriving congregation, the Third Presbyterian Church, and she began hatching plans with two partners to launch a new business, the Packet Boat. Just one year after arriving, she organized the social event of the season. It was a party to celebrate her 25th anniversary to our dad. It was a magical August evening, and mom was aglow. The house was filled with many wonderful families she had newly befriended who became lifelong friends. Homemade hors d'oeuvres were flying out of the oven. Her prized night-blooming cirrus, this is a plant that blooms only once every seven years for one single night only. It was actually fully in bloom that night. (laughs) No joke. She radiated in a homemade silk dress, and she even flew members of my high school barbershop quartet for entertainment. She had made Rochester her new home. A dear old friend from Rochester wrote, I can't even begin to put the words that what Marilyn has meant to me over the years. How do I begin to describe such an incredible woman and friend? She was my go-to person for advice on all kinds of things, cooking, decorating, raising boys, entertaining, books and music, relationships, and kindness. Her style and beauty and warmth will still speak to me for years to come. While many adults want nothing to do with teenagers, mom had an unrelenting urge to get to know them better. She had the gift of how to relate to young people. And as if, it wasn't, if, she, as if she wasn't busy enough raising her own teenage boys, she and dad volunteered to chaperone our church youth group in Lexington. Mind you, this was a time when teens were growing their hair long and protesting against the establishment. Who knew what possessed her? One annual retreat was in the dead of winter to a cabin in the White Mountains with no heat, no running water, where she cooked pancakes and bacon on an ancient cast iron wood burning stove for an ever hungry crowd. She was just drawn to teens and they to her. A family friend from the beach writes, Mrs. Harrison touched so many lives across the globe with her sharp mind, meaningful stories and her genuine love and care for each and every one she met. For me, there was a connection from the very beginning when I was just 12 or 13 and started hanging out with the Harrison boys. I remember being so impressed how she did it all. Entrepreneur, mother, wife, and she made it look so easy. She knew the magic of our Cape Cod friends and she made it possible for us to gather, whether in tiny cottage number eight or in Lexington during Columbus Day weekend in 1973. 
Those special times she made possible shaped the person I am today, and I thank her for that. From another, from another family friend from Cape Cod. I felt a special connection to Mrs. Harrison right from the start as a teen, though I realize that I'm one of many who felt, who felt that way. I saw her as a cooler version of my own dear mother, and we had many similar, similar interests, such as gardening, cooking, kids, fabric, decorating, and reading, to name a few. She was insightful, interested, and encouraging. My kids felt this way about her, too, so the connection she created with others spanning the generations. She zeroed in on people's strengths and championed them to make use of their talents. She always had helpful tips to share from her wide experiences and diverse knowledge. No remembrance as a mom would be complete without mention of the fourth child, the only daughter in the family. She and my father made three trips overseas to Eastern Europe, <clears throat> me, and the former Soviet Union after communism collapsed in the early 1990s to teach and consult with companies there transitioning to a market economy. On the third trip, they went to the Republic of Georgia, where dad was assigned to train a college professor, to become, <clears throat> to become a marketing consultant, and mom met an amazing nun known as Mother Miriam, who was running social services for single mothers and for orphans displaced by the war in the Caucasus Mountains. At the end of their stay, the college professor, Akaki Bokachava, approached mom and dad about finding a host family in the United States for his multilingual 15-year-old daughter, Tina, to live with and to attend high school. Well, long story short, um, uh, Tina, mom and dad became Tina's host parents the next fall. Tina quickly became the apple of their eye. Mom may have tired more easily being the mother to a teen again at the spry age of 70, but she was so proud of the amazing growth and success of Tina. Mom and dad actually enjoyed uh, Tina so much that they accidentally let her overstay her visa, her student visa, by four months during her junior year at Nasset High School. And they were told by US immigration officials that Tina would probably not be allowed to return to the United States for at least 10 years. But as soon as a Georgian worker in the US Embassy in Tbilisi heard that the Harrisons were supporting the work of Mother Mariam, the council quickly changed his tune, stamped Tina's passport for another visa, and, visa went on, and Tina went on to graduate with honors from Nasset High School, Smith College, and the Fletcher School of Diplomacy at Tufts University. <coughs> and she's now a member of the parliament of, in Georgia. And this is a note from Tina. Mrs. Harrison warmly opened up not only her home, but also her heart to me during my prolonged stay with the family on the cave. I will never forget the hours we spent reviewing my English writing assignments where, with motherly love and inspiring motivation, she nurtured my writing skills. I enjoyed helping Mrs. Harrison in the kitchen or in the garden because being at her side, she always radiated compassion and a desire to share her inner world and her many talents. Her joie de vie was contagious and inspires me to this day. And these words are from Akaki Bokuchava, Tina's father. Marilyn played an extremely important role, one of destiny, in my life and the life of our family. If it were not for her, our lives would have turned out completely differently. Neither Tina nor her brother would have had the, education, the opportunity to spend time in America with its educational opportunities. She was a tremendous woman, kind-hearted, warm, and compassionate. We give thanks to God for all of her kindness and all she did for others for people, for us. May heaven bless her, let the earth surround her, and pass her memory to future generations. While she was Mrs. Harrison to many, mom had an endearing nickname that only a few outside the family knew about and used. Her nickname was Poos, as in Aunt Poos, or as in Nana Poos to her grandchildren. The name originated during her childhood when to make ends meet, her mother and father, who was a new college professor, moved on to campus to become dorm parents. Along with young Marilyn and her older sister Shirley, also came Sandy, their English setter hunting dog. 
who became mom's protector and constant companion. This toddler with the long curly brown hair and Sandy by her side quickly became such a familiar sight on campus and practically a mascot that faculty members started calling her Papoose. Well, Papoose was shortened to Poos and a nickname was born. Another Cape Cod friend wrote, I always knew that Poos was someone interested and insightful that I could bounce ideas and plans off of, and that I would be comforted and the wiser for her engagement. Marilyn occupied, and always will, an outsized role in what I consider extended family. They broke the mold when they cast Aunt Poosie, and I will always be indebted to her for being for, there for me over the years. An old friend of the family writes, I adored Marilyn. Her bubbling, effervescent voice, always filled with enthusiasm, brightened every day. Those dear days are timeless, emotional movies in my mind. Pooh's preparing warm dinner plates with bountiful fare, retiring nightly to the warmly lit living room with a golden retriever sharing the sofa, reading her sunset magazine, and listening to classical music playing softly in the background. Pooh's sewed outfits, always understated, yet elegant in a combination of fine silks and fabrics with, with a proportion that matched her fine eyes. Pooh's made everything look so easy and effortless. She was a master organizer, creative spirit, and a champion of all things good in life. Her constant joy and life spirit ever contagious. I know that her greatest joy and legacy was cultivating her family garden, her marriage, her children, her grandchildren. Keith, you and she modeled an amazingly supportive, collaborative marriage, and your interactions with each other are such an inspiration, not just to me, but so, to so many others. I am undoubtedly a better person for being the beneficiary of Pooza's love and affections and her contributions to my life. Every time I'm preparing a meal, gardening, playing with my dog, accessorizing an outfit, reading quietly or flipping through a magazine, Pooz is with me. Mom was an honorary member of the Harvard Business School class of 1956 where dad earned a master's degree. As mentioned earlier, the B School was a joint venture between them. Mom was dad's editor in chief, helping him refine his weekly case study essays and then racing, against, racing across Harvard Square to submit them by the deadline on Saturday nights. After graduating, she helped him organize reunions, first providing goodie bags from the packet boat gifts, and then assembling massive floral decorations for the banquet halls. For their 40th reunion, they had already left for Eastern Europe, but she made dozens of hydrangea centerpieces, and five years later, she grew topiary for their celebration in the newly inaugurated Spangler Hall. Ultimately, the class reunion chair and his wife became close friends to mom and dad, and selected them as the only team they would accept to co-chair reunions and class events with them. So together they organized trips to Down East Maine, to a lighthouse in Chatham, and most memorably on a cruise to Venice and the Dalmatian coast of Croatia. This is from a friend from the business school. I wanted to share with you my recent conversation with Marilyn a few weeks ago. As we spoke, it reminded me of just what an extraordinary woman she is. I had called her to gather some thoughts for a program at the 65th reunion on her perspective of the world our grandchildren are facing today versus the world we stepped into in the 1950s. And first, what advice you might give to them, and second, what thoughts came to mind as advice to us as we grow older. Though she was exhausted from a long day of packing, unpacking, organizing, problem solving, she stopped for a moment and then started to speak. She said that though she was physically impaired, couldn't read, cook, garden, or sew anymore, she said the most important thing is to always be looking forward. Keep yourself intellectually stimulated, search for audiobooks, hook up with libraries. Reduce your goals for what you want to do in a day. Keep the family ties strong. It is the strength of the family that holds us together. Don't dwell on the past. Appreciate what other people do for you. 
Don't take anything for granted. Renew friendships. Friendships are powerful. Make the best of your situation. Be positive. Find the bright spot. Always be looking forward. We share your heavy heart for the loss of one of the most joyful, loving, caring, fun, and total joy to be with women we have ever known. Marilyn was bursting with sunbeams, no matter what the circumstances. She would light up the darkest, dreariest days of the year and fill them with spotlights and sparkles of wit, laughter, and delight. There's a bright new star in the sky. Always looking forward, that was mom all right. Thank you for these and thank you for all the comments you sent us of your support, we deeply appreciate them. As we go forth with our own life journeys, we will never forget mom's enduring legacy of this special community of relationships which she wove. This community is an extended family across generations and continents of like-minded souls who shared visions with her of the meaning of a life well lived and of a better world that we would cherish and will inspire us for years to come. Amen. The Harrison family wishes to express their heartfelt gratitude for all of the support we have received. Everyone here today has made a special effort to join us, some of you coming very long distances. We have received more than 100 condolence cards, emails, and even a flowering dogwood tree. Many supporters have made financial memorial gifts to the American Friends of Georgia, a favorite charity, and this memorial service would not have been possible without the advice and participation of Reverend Morgan, Kimberly Dennis, and the deacons of this church. We are also grateful for Mark Baker's professional live streaming skills as the service is being viewed live in places such as Santa Barbara, Washington, Pittsburgh, Raleigh, Cincinnati, Madison, Georgia, and Tbilisi, the capital of the Republic of Georgia. And so the Harrison family wants to say thank you. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for your word. It is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. We thank you especially that in the night of our grief and in the shadows of our sorrow, we are not left to ourselves. We have the light of your promises to sustain and comfort us. Through our tears, give us vision to see in faith the consolation you intend for us. In your mercy, grant us the unfailing guidance of your saving word, both in life and in death. With faith in your great mercy and wisdom, we entrust Marilyn Morgan Harrison to your eternal care. We praise you for her steadfast love for her all the days of her earthly life. We thank you for all that Marilyn was to those who loved her and were friends to her and for her faithfulness to the Church of Jesus Christ through her years, notably her faithful dedication to the Federated Church of Orleans. We thank you that for Maryland, all sickness and sorrow are ended and death itself is past, and that she has entered the home where all your people gather in peace. Keep us all in communion with your faithful people in every time and place, that at last we may rejoice together in the heavenly family with you forever. And together, let us say the prayer Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us in a joyous hymn, Simple Gifts, Lord of the Dance.
May the God of grace fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And the blessings of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Comforter rest and remain deep in your hearts this day and always. Go now with the peace of Christ. Amen. Thank you.